Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In the previous video, we looked at the basic conceptual overview of the pub sub pattern and why we might want to use it. In this video, we'll look at its actual implementation and how we can set it up in .NET using C Sharp. As usual, I will leave a link to the GitHub repository with my code in the video description. A previous version of this video covered the exact same code in Python. So if you're more familiar with Python, please check that video out instead. So again, we're using Visual Studio Code here. What I've done here to begin with is I've created three different .NET projects here. So I have the first consumer project, the second consumer project, and the producer project. Each project has the exact same code that we use in our very first .NET C Sharp example around publishing a message to the default exchange and then consuming that from a single consumer. So the producer code for a producer is the same as that and the first consumer and second consumer both have the same code for a simple consumer. What we'll do in this example is we will slightly edit this producer and consumer code to set up for the pub sub pattern where we've got a single producer and two consumers both consuming the same messages that the producer produces. We will jump in and we will start with our producer code. The code here will be very, very similar to what we had before. We will use the same connection code, the same factory, the same channel iteration stuff. We'll just edit some stuff down here to set it up for pubs up. First thing we need to do is the producer no longer needs to declare a queue. This is because every consumer will have its own dedicated queue. So it makes sense for the producer not to declare any queue because it actually doesn't even know how many queues should be consuming from it it should publish to an exchange and then the exchange will take care of which queues to deliver the message to. So we can delete this here, but what we actually have to do now is because we're no longer using the default exchange, we have to explicitly create an exchange. So to do that, we call channel dot exchange declare and we pass in the name of the exchange. So in this case, we'll just simply call it pub sub. And also we want to pass the type of exchange. So as we saw in the conceptual video, we'll be using the fan out exchange for this, where the exchange fans out or copies the message to all the queues that are interested in consuming it. So exchange type and fan out. So now that we've declared our queue, we want to publish our message onto it. So we'll just edit this slightly. So we'll say, hello, I want to broadcast this message. We will encode the message the same way and we will publish it more or less the same way, but we're no longer publishing it directly to the letterbox queue through the default exchange. We're just publishing it onto the PubSub exchange so we can replace that with this. The exchange should be PubSub and we can leave this blank here, which is the routing key parameter. We will talk about the routing key parameter when using exchanges in a upcoming video. So that's it for our code. Again, quite simple. Just want to declare the exchange explicitly and then publish to the exchange. Let's jump in and have a look at what we need to do in our consumer code. Again, not a huge amount of changes needed here. Connection code is all the same as usual. What we do want to do is declare our exchange explicitly again in our consumer. So we can copy that in from the producer exchange.declare pub sub exchange type fan out. And we have to do this here because in case the consumer starts before the producer, we need to make sure the exchange exists before we carry on with our code. And this is an item potent operation. So it actually doesn't matter how many times this runs. If the exchange already exists, nothing bad will happen. It will just use the exchange that exists. But if it doesn't exist, it will create a new one. As I said earlier, in our consumer is where we want to declare our queues. And in this case, we're going to use temporary queue so the queue will exist one queue per consumer and will only exist for as long as the consumer connection is open once the consumer connection is closed the queue will be destroyed and we're also going to let rabbitmq server actually decide the name of the queue for us so we don't actually have to explicitly set a queue so for every consumer we can just use code that creates kind of a throwaway queue that only exists as long as the consumer is consuming from it this is quite simple to do. We just simply say channel.q.declare and we don't actually need to pass it any arguments. 
And to get the queue name, we can simply say dot queue name. And we can save that in a variable called queue name for later use. Easy. So now we've our exchange declared and our queue declared. What we need to do is we need to bind the exchange to the queue. So to do this, we use the channel object and we say queue bind and we pass this in the name of the queue. So that's the queue name variable we saved earlier and also the name of the exchange, which we know is pubsub. Finally, we need to pass it a routing key, which in this case is empty. So now we've our exchange declared, our queue declared, and the queue bound to the exchange. We can consume the message in the same way as before using the received event. So we will just simply print it out, receive new message. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna edit it with the first consumer name, just to say which consumer has received the message. Finally, in our basic consume, we no longer wanna consume off the letterbox queue, we want to consume off the queue name and the temporary queue we created earlier. We're gonna leave auto act true in this example as we don't really need to worry about manually acknowledging messages here. It might be a good practice to do it, but for this simple example, auto act true is fine. And we can leave the final lines to say we're consuming the same. Let's just jump into our second consumer and copy the code from the first consumer directly there. The only thing we're gonna change is we're gonna change the name in the received event handler to be second consumer. So that's all the code changes we should need for this example. Let's open some terminal windows and just start our consumers. So the first consumer one here, we will say .NET run. And that will start our first consumer. You can see we're consuming. Let's open a second terminal window. And let's CD into our second consumer and start it using .NET run again. That will start our second consumer. And finally, a third window, terminal window, where we will start our producer. So CD into producer and start that using .NET run. So we sent a single message, hello, I want to broadcast this message and then the producer exit because we're no longer using our infinite loop. And if we look at our two consumers, we can see that the second consumer received the message, hello, I want to broadcast this message. And also the first consumer received the message, hello, I want to broadcast this message. If we publish a second one, again, using the producer, we publish it, both second consumer and the first consumer both receive it. Say for example, if we jump into our first consumer code again, and let's, in this case, not bind our queue to our channel to see what happens. So let's comment this out, save it, and we will restart our first consumer. So close this and restart, just run done that run again. So it's consuming, and let's publish a third and final message. So again, the same message, hello, I want to broadcast this message. We can see the second consumer has received it. It's received its third message here but the first consumer has not received it. So it's just received its first two. And that's because we killed the binding between the queue and the exchange. So this consumer is basically no longer interested in messages that are pushed onto the PubSub exchange. So I hope this video and the previous video on conceptual overview of PubSub have given you a good understanding of the PubSub pattern and how it's implemented in .NET and C Sharp. In the upcoming videos, we're going to look at more and more complicated messaging patterns that you can achieve in RabbitMQ. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel for more RabbitMQ content.